Good morning. Welcome to everybody. Welcome to the panelists. Welcome to all the attendees who are following us. You are um, attending to the Space for Cultural Heritage Workshop. It's one day workshop. We are going to, sp to spend all the day together. There are three uh, panels in front of us, uh, one dedicated to policy, the other to industry, and the last one, what ISA can do for you. I'm Donatella Ponziani, leading the Downstream Gateway Officer, and I have the pleasure to be uh, the moderator, not the moderator, but the uh, Master of Ceremony for, for this uh, session. Um, before introducing the panel, we will have the honor to have with us the ESA Director General, Jan Werner, who is going to give us uh, uh, his introductory speech. And today with him, we have also the honor and the pleasure to welcome Dr. Mekhil Russell, who is the director of the UNESCO World Heritage Center. Uh, Dr. Russell he is an expert in both cultural, natural heritage and the history of planning. Um, she was appointed in 2015 uh, as the director of World Heritage Center. And uh, she holds a degree in geographics from the University of Freiburg and a PhD on, uh, um, from the University of Hamburg. She has an extensive experience both in France at the CNRS, Le Centre National de la Recherche Scientifique, but also at the University of Berkeley and in uh, UNESCO. We can say that she held several positions and she has a very profound knowledge of, uh, of UNESCO and cultural heritage. Um, uh, sector. So we really welcome you. We welcome Jan. Everybody knows him, our uh, precious Director General, and I give the floor to him for his uh, introductory speech. Thank you very much, Donatella, and good morning to everybody. I'm really happy that we can have another webinar, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Donatella, for preparing all these special uh, webinars coming from the downstream gateway to link really space with different areas. I would like to share my screen with you in order to show you a little bit of what I was thinking about when I prepared today's um, webinar. So space for cultural heritage. What is that? What can we do with that? And why are we doing it? Uh, the, the reason is very simple. We have at ESA, we have a different area, what we call the programmatic pillars, science and exploration, safety and security, and applications um, looking to um, earth observation, navigation, telecommunication, and enabling and support, meaning launchers, uh, operations, and technologies. Where is the, the link to uh, cultural heritage? The link to cultural heritage is coming from uh, what we say is our addressees. Of course, we address economy, industry. Yes, of course, we are addressing the environment on the Earth, but also in space. But especially we are focusing on societal aspects, meaning we would like to, that space is really a benefit for each and everyone in the society, be he or she part of space activities or in totally different areas like cultural uh, heritage. So this is uh, my favorite picture. Um, it is uh, from the spacecraft Voyager 1 in a distance of 6.4 billion kilometers from the Earth uh, on the 14th of February 1990. So why is it my favorite picture? Because it shows a little bit how important we are, because this tiny point over there, that is the Earth. So we are not important in space, but we are important on our tiny blue dot. And therefore, it makes sense to think about all details of what is on Earth, what is the heritage, and what is the future. And for that, we have to understand that there are global challenges. And this, uh, I would like to link directly also to the heritage question. The first thing is always, um, for instance, in climate change, but also with the virus and also with heritage, to discover something. Not every, each and everything is important. But for instance, a person in, in Wuhan was uh, ill suddenly, and the question was, what was the reason? And it was a virus. So discovery was important for the uh, COVID. Discovery is important for climate change. It was not discovered on Earth, but uh, on Venus. And discovery is also important when we look to cultural heritage. The second one is monitoring. We have to monitor what is happening. Simple with the infection rate, 
simple with a, um, a part of uh, climate change and also as I will show you in a minute with um, cultural heritage and then to raise awareness to raise awareness for the COVID to raise awareness for climate change and to raise awareness for cultural heritage and I think space can do something and finally it is about the question of uh, what to do then how to preserve cultural heritage how to uh, mitigate um, the crisis and what to do with uh, with the um, uh, climate change and uh, therefore for climate change it looks uh, simple we are looking to all the different aspects of climate change uh, what is uh, the, the raise, rise of water on the sea level? What about carbon dioxide? What about ozone? What about methane, etc.? And this can only be done from space. Uh, but we also look to what are the effects on Earth which are supporting also the climate change. Um, so to raise awareness, for instance, this is the rainforest in Paraguay. And you see it's in false colors, meaning everything what is red here means it's a healthy forest. And please uh, believe me, uh, if you look to the British flag uh, on the very low line, you see from there up, you see a, street, a road through the, through the forest. And now I move to the next slide, which is just a, a few years later. It is exactly the same area. And you see how much of the forest is really gone. So this is, of course, also a problem for um, the uh, climate change. By that, we can also tell people to raise awareness about what we are doing with our tiny blue dot. And then it comes to the mitigation. I just want to show that example also over here for climate change. By minimization of contrails and route length of airplanes, we can of course minimize the effect of uh, contrails, which has an impact, which have an impact uh, impact on climate change. Now let's have a look to. Uh, cultural heritage. This is a picture showing the uh, earthquake in 2015 in Nepal. And um, this is, uh, of course, it was very, very bad. So 8,000 victims of that. But also the structures were affected by that. Here a picture which was just normally put um, on, the, on the ground. Um, and this is the uh, investigation. And this already shows what we can deliver from space. We can deliver all the settlements, the deformations of the surface, which of course are endangering also uh, cultural heritage. And um, if you look on this picture, it's a picture of Kathmandu. Um, and I go, uh, I zoom a little bit in. You see the Kalmochan temple, um, one picture before the earthquake and another one after one, so afterwards. So the investigations, the um, earth observation can give hints of uh, what happened and then also how to restructure a, stru a system um, and by that we can also uh, really do mapping of uh, an earthquake showing where are the the different structures destroyed so this picture shows uh, haiti after the earthquake and uh, when you see this uh, light yellow it means less than 10 percent of the buildings are destroyed the yellow ones means uh, between 10 and 40 percent and orange means uh, um, at least 40 percent. So it gives a hint also if you have some cultural heritage over there what may happen. And another point which is important, this is not a cultural cultural heritage, but I took this picture to show you what we can also do from space. We can measure settlements uh, in a very nice accuracy, which is important also to see the uh, stability of cultural heritage. Uh, so um, this is uh, the central station in Berlin. Uh, this is a picture of that and the colors over here are the settlements the movements in vertical directions of the structures so in this case it's not settlement uh, this is the building by the way in this case uh, it is just the deformation due to uh, different temperature in uh, during summer and during uh, winter so uh, but you see it's an accuracy of millimeters that we get the uh, information and settlements, especially different settlements, are a danger for her a cultural heritage. And uh, I give you some more examples. So uh, Machu Picchu in Peru, um, this very special location, you know the story of that. Um, and by uh, looking from space, we can see and very early detect landslides, which might then endanger this very special uh, way up to the uh, monument. Uh, this picture is very simple. It shows the 
a pyramid and everybody is happy about the pyramids, but there's also a danger for the pyramids, which can be seen from space much better than from ground. And this is that the city comes closer and closer. This is another picture from space. And this is a, a radar a picture and a radar image from space. And you see that uh, it's really endangered by humans. It's not endangered by any special action, but the humans are coming closer and by that uh, endangering the pyramids. Another example, which uh, you can see from space much better than from ground is uh, Angkor Wat. And you see this black part, um, it's a radar image. Uh, radar means you are sending an active radar beam and measuring the reflection and whatever is, uh, is flat is black in such pictures because of the reflection. And therefore you see the water around um, and by that understanding also the system as a whole, not only local parts of it. This is another uh, cultural heritage. This is also space from space but it's also a space uh, artifact. Uh, it is the moon and the arrow points to a location which is now seen to be also a cultural her heritage for the future. So the landing of Apollo uh, 11 and uh, the, the other Apollos, they left parts behind. And of course, uh, the first landing on the moon is a very special important point in uh, human history and also the first uh, vehicle on the surface of the moon by the way electric mobility is something like that so i i tried with my presentation to show you that there are different aspects of uh, what space can do with um, uh, heritage sites uh, so we can give information about the site as such we can give about um, dangers which are uh, uh, there for the heritage um, and uh, we can also give some forecast if there is uh, some special impact to be expected. With that I conclude my presentation and I wish the workshop successful um, day and I hope that from this workshop it's not just a presentation today but that we get some some clear messages what we from space uh, can do for cultural heritages. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jan, for your introductory speech. And now, and I hand over to Dr. Rosa. For Thank you very much, uh, dear Mr. Verena, is a Director General, dear Mrs. Ponziani, Head of the ESA Downstream Gateway, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it is a great pleasure for me to join you today for this important discussion on how technology such as machine learning, um, AI and satellite imaginary can support the safeguarding of cultural heritage. I wish to thank the European St Space Agency for its kind invitation. You know that space technologies have long played an important role in safeguarding our cultural heritage. In the early 1920s, scientists began to use aerial photographs to map archaeological sites and detect elements that were not visible on the ground, such as buried roads or other remains. The first civilian Earth observation satellite was launched in 1972. That was the same year that UNESCO adopted the World Heritage Convention. And this convention now counts 194 states parties, making it one of the most ratified international conventions in history. As we approach the 50th anniversary of these two global events, more and more countries and organizations are looking at the links between heritage safeguarding and space technologies. Satellite imagery was first employed for the monitoring of World Heritage Sites in 2001, when UNESCO and ESA collaborated on the study of gorilla habitats in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and you have all heard about Virunga National Park these days. In 2003, UNESCO and ESA solidified our cooperation through the launch of an open initiative on the use of space technologies in support of the World Heritage Convention. And the World Heritage Committee has since recommended the use of satellite images in a number of cases, including in Ukraine, the pyramids fields in Giza and Egypt. Mr. Werner, I have just been there 10 days ago and I actually used satellite images for my mission there. For the Dong uh, Phayen Kao Yai Forest Complex in Thailand or the tropical rainforest of Sumatra in Indonesia. 
Satellite technology has proved essential for identifying potential threats to cultural and natural heritage sites from land use changes, which you have also shown, to ground instability, logging, illegal construction, and the destruction of heritage sites, including in conflict situations, when access to these sites is often difficult or impossible. In 2015, UNESCO joined forces with the Operational Satellite Applications Program of the United Nations Institute for Training and Research, UNITA, who is also with us today, to monitor through satellite images and geospatial data uh, risk to cultural heritage due to conflict or to natural hazards. Together, we have conducted damage assessments through satellite imagery in Vanuatu and Fiji following tropical cyclone uh, Harold in 2020. We also assessed cultural sites in Tonga following the tropical cyclone uh, Gita, as well as cultural sites in Lemen and, uh, Yemen and Libya and natural sites in Iraq. And you mentioned yourself also the situation in Kathmandu, which is a World Heritage uh, Site, where we looked at the impacts of of um, the earthquakes. We also published a thorough account of the impact of conflict in Syria on Aleppo's cultural heritage by combining the expertise of imagery analysts, historians, archaeologists, and architects. We were able to show with great accuracy and detail the extent of damage to 518 buildings there. We are currently finalizing a new publication that extends this analysis to 20 other Syrian world heritage properties and cultural sites. And this work, I think, will provide an essential foundation for the reconstruction and for the recovery of these sites. In response to the growing impact of climate change on cultural and natural heritage, it's also an issue you mentioned, we have recently launched a project with the Intergovernmental Group on Earth Observation, the GEO, on the use of Earth observations for monitoring climate change impacts on world heritage cities. The scope of this activity is to reveal to the cultural heritage community the fast-paced growth of Earth observation to help address climate change impacts on world heritage cities and to contribute to innovative strategies for the conservation of cultural heritage where needs exist. New improvements to the resolution of satellite imagery and the wider range of spectral brands now uh, available means that there are more opportunities than ever for the use of space technologies for cultural heritage safeguarding. There is great potential for the use of satellite imagery to track the illegal looting of archaeological sites, for example, especially in arid regions. We also know that the new technologies such as machine learning and 3D imagery, FAT blockchain, can, used, uh, can be used to trace provenance records, which is also an important um, uh, area we work on uh, in UNESCO. However, in order to make the best use of these tools, we need to ensure that the heritage professionals have the capacity to use them and to interpret the results. And I'm saying that having learned uh, some of the technologies in the mid 1970s when I studied geography. Digital technologies have been crucial to ensuring continued access to culture during the COVID-19 pandemic and to assessing damage to cultural and to natural heritage following conflicts and disasters. However, I also have to say that COVID-19 has exposed and deepened the digital divide as some 46% of the global population remains offline, mainly in developing countries. As part of our new Heritage for Peace initiative, UNESCO will be working to expand access to remote sensing technology, to inventory and monitor cultural properties in times of peace, to support their protection during conflicts, and to facilitate recovery processes. UNESCO has also embarked on a two-year process to elaborate the first global standard setting instrument on the ethics of artificial intelligence, including in the field of culture. 
Clearly, much has been accomplished at the intersection of cultural heritage and space technologies. UNESCO looks forward to strengthening uh, our ties with uh, uh, ESA in this area and to realizing the full potential of these technologies for safeguarding cultural heritage, particularly as we face challenges and crises such as climate change, COVID-19, conflict and disasters. I wish you all a very successful and fruitful event and I look forward to the outcomes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Russell, for being with us today and for the uh, overview. And uh, I'm sure there is a lot of potential. There is a lot going on and there is a lot to cut. We'll, we'll continue to go on.